All right, welcome back to PHCR TV, and we're going to take a little tour around the place, and we're going to let the dietitian tell us what's in our foods and the best things for us. Um, we'll start off right quick with uh, everything she's going to tell us not to have, which is all the pre-made canned stuff. Even though it's better here at the farmer's markets, uh, there's less preservatives and everything else in it. Uh, one thing I do want to point out right quick for all you Coke addicts out there, because I know there's a bunch of you, um, this little drink down here is called Zevia. That guy right there. Uh, they have a whole line of these. If you just have to have that Coke in the afternoons uh, or in the mornings or whenever, uh, please don't have it in the morning. But uh, if, you, if you have to have that Diet Coke just to get that thing, just to get the uh, you know the sweetness and the fizzy and all that fun stuff, these are made with stevia. So no artificial sweeteners in them. Better than any Coke. Not the best thing in the world, but at least a better option for you Coke drinkers out there that just cannot and will not quit. So. Think about the Zevia, pick some of that up, try it out. Uh, the root beer uh, flavor right here is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so take a look at those just for just just for my own sanity and sake and for your health. Um, uh, with that, we're gonna skip forward and go into the into the real stuff. Oh, One thing I'd oh. like to show you here oh. is all of these different soup mixes that have lots of beans, legumes, and uh, in them, peas, split pea soup, black bean soup, all these mixture things wonderful to add a lot more of the fiber and the, the protein from a plant source into your diet and beans are wonderful and putting them in soups and cooking them other ways is absolutely fabulous and these looks like these are 100 percent natural hearty meals another thing i'd like to point out down here are new, different kinds of grains that's one of the things you know we always think about wheat and corn but how about something like uh, where is our I'm sorry, I overshot it. Quinoa. Quinoa is an awesome grain. It is an ancient grain from Egypt. And it is something that is very, very easy to cook and it very, very high in protein. Great sources that are a little bit different, has a little bit of a t different texture to it, but very easy to cook. And you can buy it plain and cook them, or you can cook them with different seasonings in them. A great choice, great source there. And it is technically a, a whole protein source from, from vegetable. Technically a whole protein source. That's right. Very good. Very good. Again, more different um, beans and soup. And they have a wonderful selection of gluten-free products here. So many more people these days are having issues with gluten. Uh, our, it's been so processed, our wheat has been processed over the years, that many people are now becoming allergic and having many, many difficulties with digesting it. Not, not to mention all the, all the GMO products out there, which is when they go in, they, they fiddle with the actual DNA code of of things which change the gluten properties of the gluten uh, or the proteins in, in the wheats, uh, which actually makes them somewhat toxic in the system. That's right. You really start chemically messing with it. And there are so many more people who are being diagnosed with uh, celiac disease and gluten intolerance. And you know, of course, the other part of it too is that one of the things that we're going to talk about is getting back to nature, getting back to foods in their natural form. But there are times that you still want to eat some breads, you still want to have some sweets, some things like that. And so some of these are really, really great products that are gluten-free that you can still enjoy the different foods. And for the people out there, there are tons of gluten-free products coming out now, tons of them. Most of them are usually buckwheat-based or they're quinoa-based, uh, things like that. So you're still getting the grains, but you're getting much better sources of grains uh, with those. So I'll have a few of those on the blog, actually, that I'll, that I'll post uh, for people to look at. Um, but uh, we'll move on to, onto, sure. onto the real food that's still fresh and alive. Okay. Um, and while we're down here, uh, tons of different oils. Uh, I will throw out a couple things for the oils. Uh, you get, of course, you get the canola oil, sesame oil, uh, things like that. One of my favorites is actually coconut oil for cooking with because uh, it is a fantastic oil, very, very high in, in, in MCTs, which are medium chain triglycerides, which actually help increase thermal regulation in the body. They keep you warm, they actually increase metabolic rate, and they don't get stored. They actually use for energy, just like that. So fantastic for uh, uh, for a cooking source, plus they don't spoil whenever you heat them up dramatically. And like olive oil, which just gets destroyed, which is taken over about 160 degrees. Um, so with that, uh, with the real foods, we have, well, we're gonna start with all the greens. Uh, so of course we've got, uh, 
We have spinach, we have uh, kale, we have spring mix, which is a big mix of everything else. Uh, oh, we have some, some spinach greens coming up in a little bit. Uh, let's talk about, quite quick, uh, I know you had some tips and pointers on especially kale and uh, the spinach greens. Spinach, there's some spinach right in here. Yeah. Uh, the couple of things about kale. Kale is, if you want to look at the Andy score of kale, it's a 1,000. It's almost closer to a perfect food when it comes to the nutritional value. And kale, most people just know it when it's a on their plate as a garnish. But the more leafy, deeper green, and more vibrant color, you've got a better kale, a better source. And what's in kale? We've got calcium, iron, of course fiber, as well as a great source of protein. And there are many ways to cook kale. And one is, and this is going to be kind of crazy people think about this, but have you ever had kale chips? I have had kale chips actually, yes. Okay, homemade kale chips. Though. I've had homemade. What you're doing is you're, it, it works well when you wash the greens very, very well and you put them on a tray to go into the oven. And you sprinkle a little bit of olive oil over it and then some seasonings like either hot peppers or uh, seasoned salt or seasonings without the salt in it. That's really the better part. And you bake it in the oven at about 325 for about 10 to 15, sometimes even 20 minutes. And they come out nice and crispy and they are delicious. But of course, you can cook them just like you would cook other greens. And my favorite way to use kale is in a green drink in the morning for breakfast. I use fresh kale, a fresh apple that I have cored. I leave the skin on it. Of course, it's washed well. As well as some, a tablespoon of ground flaxseed, freshly ground, and a, one banana that I froze before um, I would put it in the drink. Blenderize that up, and it's awesome and wonderful, full of all kinds of great antioxidants and phytochemicals and nutrients. So we're about to branch out a little bit. Get past the, uh, the spinach, because our ace spinach, our ace regular lettuce. Hopefully we're doing romaine instead of the iceberg, because iceberg is uh, almost nothing. Um, get you some kale, try it out. The kale chips, I've had them, they are fantastic. I haven't had the homemade, but I have had the kale chips. So if you're looking for something for whenever the Cowboys are playing, because not everybody's gonna watch the Cowboys, you have to do that for, for Thanksgiving. Make some kale chips, do some dip. There's some that will help your option for uh, for wife sitting around doing that. Now, when it comes to spinach, if you're not quite ready to get to the kale, I start with spinach because it's not quite as uh, a brisk of a taste. I'll put the spinach in my green drink in the morning. But my favorite spinach, uh, besides a spinach salad, but cooked spinach, I use a little bit of olive oil and garlic and some sun-dried tomatoes. And then I put that in a pan and I throw in fresh spinach and do a really fast, quick uh, French uh, stir fry. And you have a delicious side dish for any meal. It's a great accompaniment. Nice. I actually use it in my tuna salad. I might actually post that one someday. Moving down the way, of course, we got the zucchinis, we got the cucumbers, tons of green stuff. Uh, Orange for the carrots. Yep. But the big one, Brussels sprouts are huge. Sorry, people. Have some Brussels sprouts. Tremendous nutrient value, and I'm sure you can tell us all about what's in there. Brussels sprouts are part of the cruciferous family, and that is really, really good for anti carcinogens. Uh, it's really great for the intestines. Uh, and what Brussels sprouts, they really are, they really are good. Just cut off the ends, take out the outer leaves, and you can steam them. Cut them in half, though and then steam them with a, and put in a little bit of butter and some garlic with that and then let it, after it's steamed and you've got the butter in there, let it go ahead and caramelize on the Brussels sprout. They really, really, really are good. And this, we're talking about Brussels sprouts, cabbage, both the red and the green down there, and things like broccoli. They're all in that same family and awesome, awesome, awesome for health and they taste good too. And, and guys, just so you know, you gotta have your cruciferous your vegetables because of one big thing, they get excess estrogen out of the system. They get toxins out of the system as well. Uh, they've got one compound called IC3, get all three carbonyl, 
uh, and lights his own thyroid estrogens, pulls them out of the system. So if you want to be a more manly man and have more testosterone in the system, less estrogen, have a bunch of those. Bunches. Helps out for the women too. Keeps those, keeps things normalized and even. Thank you. Cal. Um, of course, we had the broccoli. Are we talking fresh about broccoli? broccoli. And, and the local. cauliflower. And the cauliflower. And, and, cauliflower. and I was going to say how wonderful that here they will package both of it together so that you can get a little bit of both without over overspending and having way too much excess. Yeah. And, ooh, one of my favorite things, I love this, because uh, it, it will freak people out. If you take cauliflower and you mash it up, you put a little bit of butter in there, a little bit of garlic, it's just like having mashed potatoes. Trust me, seriously, it's fantastic. Your friends will never know the difference until you tell them you're eating cauliflower and they'll freak out. It's hilarious. It's great fun. It's great fun. And of course, here you've got all the beautiful colors of peppers. You've got the red, the yellow, and the green. And, and the, you know, a lot of people tell me that they have a difficulty digesting the green, but I can tell you that the red is milder. What, it starts out being red and then gets greener as time goes on while, it, while the different nutrients are coming to fruition while it's on the vine. And so all of the different peppers have different chemical compounds in it that are really, really good for the body. And of course, you're looking for deep colors, bright colors, the more phytochemicals and the more antioxidants that are in the fruits and the vegetables. And firm, that's the other thing that you're looking for in a pepper. The, the more colors, the better. The brighter, the more. You know, you basically want a cornucopia. You want a you want a rainbow sitting on the on the table. Um, and you want a rainbow that's raw, not just a rainbow in, that's cooked. The more raw that you can get, because what we've got in fruits and vegetables, you're looking for the enzyme activity that helps with digestion. Well, if you can eat something raw before a meal, it will actually stimulate the enzymes in the, that's naturally in the body, and you get to use what's in the fruits and the vegetables rather than your pancreas having to make it. And that helps with digestion, and it preserves health. Speaking of having it raw, for the potatoes, if you'll take one and have it raw, just slice it up and put a little bit of sea salt on there, I bet you can't eat just one. Literally, you can't eat just one because you won't finish the whole thing. You, you will literally be so full you cannot eat one whole potato when it's raw. Uh, it's like trying to drink a gallon of milk by itself. It won't happen. Everything fills up. Um, go beyond that. Every party needs to have a fun guy in the party, and this is one of the best fun guys to have at the party, or any meal. So, guys, you want to tell us about the, about the fun guys? <laughs> wonderful. Mushrooms. What, when you, no matter, even they're white, people say, oh, stay away, away from white. Well, white is perfectly fun, especially when it comes in a fun guy. It's like nut mushrooms. What you want to look for in a mushroom is that it has no blemishes, and then on the inside, that it's not separating. When they're nice and firm and they're all together, that's the best kind of a mushroom to get. Yep. And for immune function, they're huge. And of course, it's, it's called flu season, so the more it's tough you can get to, to get immune function up, the better. And those are one of the best things in the world for immune function. Uh, of course, we get tons of fruits, we get citrus, but big thing. Apples are in season. Apples are in season. And look at the variety of colors and the different flavors. Again, it really has to do with the nutrition is in all of them, just a little bit different in each one. But you know what they say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And it's really, really true. You know that in an apple, you get vitamin C. There's about five milligrams of the entire vitamin C complex in it. But because of all the other nutrients that are around it and that are available when you're eating a whole apple, you're going to have the equivalent of taking one of those thousand milligram vitamin C tablets. So eat your apples every day. And one of those compounds is actually called uh, quercetin. Quercetin is huge for immune function and also for allergy to salad relief. Uh, fantastic for allergy relief. And the only way you can get that is to have the peel on the apple. Once you take that peel off, you'll lose the quercetin because that's where it's at, along with most of the vitamin C. You know, when it comes to apples, too, many of us have too many in the, in the bin and we want to throw them out because they're getting old. I say stop doing that. Cut them up and actually boil them with some water. And you put them through a sieve and you make your own applesauce. And you'll have reserved some of the nutrients as well as the fact that you don't have as much waste. Yeah. And applesauce, who didn't love applesauce? Especially with a little bit of cinnamon on it. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. And uh, they're so sweet that you don't need any sugar. Yep, you got berries, 
Uh, cranberries, of course, are in this time of year uh, because everybody's got to have uh, cranberries. Get the real stuff. Don't get that canned cranberry stuff, please. Please. Get the real ones. Crush them up. Uh, chop them up. Have them that way. They're much better for you. Um, eggs, of course. Must have your eggs. Eggs are fantastic for you. Tons of studies about eggs. Have the whole egg. The yolk is actually very good for you because it's got tons of lutein in it. Uh, the cholesterol is not bad for you because of uh, the lectin, leptin, and everything else that's in the egg. Helps by utilizing the cholesterol that's in there, and it is actually really good for immune function. And that's where I have the proteins at in that egg. Um, one thing I do want to show off, and we have to end here because this is where we started the show. I want to get some some more intake, uh, some more advice from oh, Kathy on these. We have avocados, which of course is more greens. We have pineapples, some bananas. You gotta have bananas. Um, but I have to leave off with this tomatoes because I started off with, with tomatoes making fun of Congress because you know they're saying that uh, you know pizzas are fruits or actually a, a, a vegetable sorry guys these are the real things this is what needs to be in the schools and if you'll tell us a little bit about the lovely tomato the tomato oh the, what we're looking for is you're locally grown if you were to buy a tomato that came from in the grocery stores and put that on your counter what, um, it would not change over even a two-week period of time. What you're looking for is a tomato that's slightly firm, that's got a deep red color, and smells pretty good too. And you know that that's fresh and it's good for you. Lycopene, fiber, uh, all kinds of different fruits, vegetables. Ugh. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> just totally flipped that First, one. Vegetables, Sorry. They're, they're all the same because they're, they're vine ripe and they ripen on vine. So I, technically, they are fruit and they are vegetables. So you kind of go both ways right. with that. Um, but I want to end on the last note with the tomato, uh, so the guys in Congress would actually see what one of these is and what they are. Uh, with that, we'll be back in a couple weeks with the next show. The next show is going to be about immune function specifically because we are in getting into the winter months. There's a lot of colds, flus, everything else. So I want you to know about what to do for immune function to keep your immune system up and running during the during, uh, winter winter months. Uh, so with that, Kathy, thank you for coming out. Thanks for having me, Claire. Uh, uh, Rose Mead, uh, Farmer's Market, thank you for having us out here and letting us take over your store for a while which you can see tons of stuff. Oh, one other thing, the gourds. I have to throw this out there. Get gorgeous with gourds. They got tons of nutrients in them. I will find some, uh, some, some menu items to use those for instead of just using them as decoration as most everybody does because they do have some good stuff. Uh, with that, come back next time. Immune Function, uh, Personal Health Care Reform TV, the big show now. All right, talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Happy holidays.